welcome to the MMA Road Show, episode number 350. Mm. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me. We're also going to have a little, little guest appearance here and there yeah. by, by Hot Tea himself, Oscar Willis from the World MMA Award nominated The Mac Life. In fact, the World MMA Award nominated himself, Oscar Willis. <laughs> Days. <laughs> For two more days. That's right. We find out on Friday if uh, which one, we, I guess we find out which one of us is taking home the hardware, right? I mean, we're pretty sure that between our outlets, between us, well, uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that both those awards are coming home. I with mean, us. considered you know we're against frauds and charlatans, John. I can't <laughs> imagine anyone else is taking that home. <laughs> wow, that's fired early. Uh, I was thinking, should we have called this the original pub talk when we when we started? Well, I know oh, we I know we, stuck, we decided it. to go with so the MMA road. I was going to say we'll like talk. We we just got a chance to sit through another episode of the holy, a very funny, holy episode. original uh, <laughs> co- concept. Uh, I believe it's called the uh, the Mac Life Road Show with Oscar Willis. It's a fantastic program where, uh, of course, how Oscar dare you interrupt <laughs> us? Poor service. She's like, uh, she doesn't know. You don't. You can't interrupt. We just go. We just go. She felt she looked so bad on her face. You can't interrupt the MMA yeah, Rose. Just roll no, it. Another another spectacular episode of uh, Pub Talk. Very funny. The very Mac funny. Life Road Show with Mac Oscar Willis. Show. Check it out on YouTube. You and uh, Dan Hooker. The series coming soon to to a close, at least for now, right? Well, we're hoping to cram another one in, as she said on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, depending on how. Uh, tie to a Vars' after party goes for Dan, I guess, mm. was the, the real kicker. Um, and also, look, I like to go out and visit the sites on Saturday nights after no. fights myself. So no. who, who knows who goes to the I'm going to be honest with you. I heard you guys talking about the plans for Sunday, and I thought to myself, episode's not happening. <laughs> episode's not happening. Because <laughs> like, we're going to be down down at the T-Mobile, and it's always late night. I feel like super late when we get late out of there. Night. It's going to be late night. But I'm, I'm, I'm less worried about Oscar than I am really about Dan. I mean, I, yeah. I think I was going to be – but Dan at Tai Tuivasa's after party, I, I just don't see that going well for you know, anybody. But, you know, Dan gets like a – since getting to know Dan a little bit through this whole show and this process, he's a bit of a stoic guy. Right. It's a bit weird to have some dude like talk about an after party and not invite you to <laughs> even fucking <laughs> once. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. All right, well, listen. Hey. Cold Coffee, 350 episodes. I know, you know, wow. just it's just a round number. It doesn't really mean anything, but no. it's another little milestone, right? That's 350 quite the milestone. Consecutive, consecutive weeks, by the way. Maybe a, a day early. We're doing the Wednesday thing again, but I like it, man. We just did a uh, media day, 16 yeah. interviews in the can. Well, I mean, it was a, it was a last minute decision that we sort of just r- abruptly came to. I mean, even though we kind of knew that there was the possibility that we were mm-hmm. going to definitely do this, but it just makes so much sense when we know that tomorrow. Even if, if everything works out great and the day goes splendid, awesome. But we know that anytime you take going into other locations and you do another shit and media day stuff, that shit could just go wrong, right. you know. So it's good to get it out and just get it done. But, man, I'm trying to think, what's that? The, we got that podcast award or something that somebody gave us for the uh, most consistent or something. Most consistent. At this point, just rename it. Just rename the shit, you know, because this we should be get we should be a shoe in for this year. I mean, has anybody else done 350 consecutive weeks without fail? I mean, I'm I'm not sure what R- Rogan's run was. Okay, it might be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He, he, I mean, he's got a few episodes. But few but okay sh- okay hold on hold on. Should I bring him up? So he's beating us. He's beating us in uh, in consistency, but we're surely beating him in audience size. Oh, of course, easily, okay, easily. So I mean, just the other day, I think it was serious, and uh, some other ones that reached out and were like, "Would you like to be on our show on our on our platform?" And right, I was like, bro. We 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 much. We're, more appreciate we're solid. Our, we like staying low key, you know. We we want to just stay at YouTube. Spot, Spotify and, and came with that hundred million. Can I, can we're I, like, bro. Can I just say, I'm glad you guys stay low key as well, or I wouldn't be working <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, some of the things I've crushed on this fucking podcast. That's true. We have. Uh, that just brought up tears. I was like, I was, we have we have ruined careers before. We have. That's <laughs> true. Oh. We have got people fired from their. 10-year job Boy, or whatever. Kind of just brought it down there for a I second. Know. Shout out to Fiasco Jones. Shout out to Fiasco Jones. Pour one out for the homie. Well, All right. he's yeah. much happier in his new position anyway, so he it turned is. out to be a blessing in disguise. He's he at like some place doing like fitness videos or something, which is totally him. Wow. <laughs> I know. He walked in. He was like, are they judging me? Are they judging me? He's like, I open up the like the company fridge and it's all like fitness bars and, and, and fitness drinks. That's hilarious. I was like, take a hint. Woo. Man. Yeah. Making me feel bad. All right, USC 269. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on so we're not getting anybody else fired. USC 269 
Oliveira versus Poirier is, of course, the event this week. Uh, man, I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, look, we're fortunate as hell to have this for this job for a living, right? I mean, we, we go, we watch fights, we talk to fighters. It's amazing. If you're a fan of mixed martial arts, how could you not love what we get to do? I got to say, though, this one, like, as a, as the fan inside me, you know what I mean? Like, look, it's, 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 it's week after week of fights, and sometimes it gets a little repetitive and whatever. But, dude, I am so pumped up for this main event, especially. Like, I just think – Two guys that have, like, put in the hours, put in the work, deserve to be where they're at, are phenomenal fighters, are at amazing stages of their career. Good Des people. Good people. This is no gimmick. This is no hype. This is no selling something that's not there. This, to me, is just a phenomenal main event. And I got to say, man, I am as excited about this fight as I can think of one in a long time. And uh, I don't know if that's a sentiment you guys share. Like I said, I, I, I still don't know exactly how good this thing is going to do on pay-per-view. Like, I don't know. I mean, I yeah. guess maybe Dustin Poirier has got that Conor McGregor rub after the last two fights. He's definitely a bigger star than he's ever been before. But I don't know if this is going to do a ton of money in, in terms of sales. Yeah. But I'm telling you, me right now, I'm fired up. And, and talking to the guys today didn't change that one bit, man. I mean, I'm definitely fired up for this. I mean, and you're right. I mean, these are two guys we've been watching for quite some time. And the fact of watching their sort of career arc just being the guys that have just been grinding and grinding and fighting all these guys. And it was always like, man, when are they going to get their shot? When are they going to get their shot? Dustin had the chance at the interim title, had his hands on it for a while. But you're watching two guys that you couldn't respect and like more, right. you know. I mean, they've always been great, you know. Charles got the best teeth in the game, you know. <laughs> we well paid money on that one. Um, the only Darren thing Till that just, might, Darren Till might uh, Darren Till's got to differ. He's like, I mean, the only thing that well, – and you can't understand either one of them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Darren Till. But, like, Charles, I think the only thing that really stopped him – from being even a bigger star is the fact of there is that language barrier. I agree. But I think you're right. I think Justin, while he did get some shine from um, all the Connor thing, what's what's a little rough and what's weird is that people have short memories. Like if I went back and asked my family right now and said, hey, you remember that McGregor fight that you guys got excited for and you and you and you saw it, tell me what the name of the guy was that, was that beat him. Right. Tell me the name. And I don't know if they Maybe would. Maybe they wouldn't. I don't know if they would be able to pull that off. But people that have been watching the sport, um, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a person that doesn't like Dustin's story, that doesn't, you know, that has something bad to say. I mean, I, I think it would be hard to find somebody that says, man, I just don't like that guy. I mean, his work, I don't, I don't his work ethic. How. There's something wrong with you. There's something. Yeah, I mean, there's something wrong with you if you, if you find something wrong with him. I mean, this card in general um, – I love that it's in a big venue, but I mean, I'm, we'll get, we'll talk to it, we'll talk about it all. But I mean, top to bottom, this is probably oh. one of the coolest cards, Stat. top to bottom, of just Stat. just killer fighters that um, and matchups that you think that maybe would have been cool to see. Some of these would it would have been cool to see them maybe happen a little while ago, but still now you're seeing, uh, you know, a, maybe a changing of the guard in some of these ones, and you're seeing like up and coming guys that. Maybe people don't know quite who they are. Think about it today when we were at, when we were at the USC Apex, right? Like we walk in and and I see Alex Perez sitting over there, and I'm like, oh okay. Well, I'm like, oh wait, we're not even talking we're to him today. Talking you to know him. what I mean? Oh, Ryan Hall, we're not even talking to him. Yeah. Uh, we saw Julian Robertson, we saw Randy Costa, we saw these all these people. Yep. Walk by. They're not even part of Media Day yep. because they're so far down on the prelims. That's how good this yeah. card is. And that and every person you name, the, the, that's the, that's the future stars. I mm -hmm. mean, these are the guys that they've already grabbed. You know. Great headlines and had wonderful performances. I mean, who doesn't love Robertson, man? I I, uh, I am absolutely love her. Yep. Um, but I mean, like every dude that you named, um, Perez, Costa, all these guys—they're studs, man. Yep. And it's just crazy because you know, even going into the fact that you know everybody made a big deal about Dominic Cruz being on the prelims, but that just goes to show you the strength of this card. Could that fight have been moved up? Absolutely, sure. it could have. But at what point? I mean, do you say, okay, sorry, Cody, I know you're making your debut with this. No, we're not going to have that. I think the only one that maybe, maybe Jeff Neal, Ponzinibbio, but Ponzinibbio has been this guy that everybody's like saying he's a future title. And that possible. should be an absolute banger, And that too. should be absolutely crazy. So, I mean, this is one of those ones where, you know, I don't think enough people talked about the fact that, you know, the, this is two title fights. You know, we've had some of these pay per views where they just had the ones. This is two title fights, and this is still an interesting enough title fight on the on the co main 
where I think a lot of people are still like, oh, man, it just walks through everybody. So it, it, they, it's almost like they think that this is just a one-title fight but, card. But I'm intrigued by this matchup. That fight is going to be good. I'm intrigued by this matchup. It's going to be good. I'm, I'm pumped. Up. All right, so let's talk about the main event first, right? Dustin Poirier, Charles Oliveira. Uh, Dustin Poirier today came in. Uh, D Dustin, as you said, man, he's so easy to respect right now, man, and the way he talks and the way he represents. He's such a great representative of the sport. Gives back to his sport. community. Every Give time, back every to time community. he comes back, he has some news story about what they're doing, and it's just like you, you have to like the dude even more. I right? love it. And I, I, I love the quote today, and it's so true. You know, where he talks about this is 25 minutes for eternity, right? Because it's, it's absolutely true. Once a champ, you are always a champ. Yeah. That never can be taken away from you. That That is etched in stone forever, and this is his opportunity to do that. And, you know, he had the interim belt, and he's had some great moments, but he's always kind of slipped up a little bit. But it feels like now he's executing at a higher level. Meanwhile, you have Charles Oliveira who says, look, I don't have anything to prove. Like, I have, proved, I have, I have gone through this. I've yeah. set records. Because I know some people probably say, well, you picked up a vacant title. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, you didn't – you know, look who you beat. You know, you beat, you beat Chandler. Yeah. Who, he wasn't Because you're talking in reference where the, fi the, 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 the reporter was like, do you feel like you're a champ because you haven't defended That's the belt right. yet? And he and was like, like – Take that cliche out, man. He said, like, bro, <laughs> yeah, I've been here for – I've been doing this for 11 years, man. Oh I got the God. knockouts record. I got the bonuses record. I got the – he's like – That's almost better, right? Yeah, I man. mean, like, title defenses are great, but what, I mean, what if every title defense is just you go in there and you smash people like what people think about Amanda right. sometimes? Like, they're just like – Oh, well, of course she was going to win. He earned his way here, man. He earned it's, his way here. There's, there's, and nothing was given. There. Nothing was given. Yeah. He got it all the way. So I'm, all right, no. So I'm pumped about that. This is why I'm so excited about it right now. But here, here's what I want to get to is kind of what you guys are thinking about this fight because I picked Dustin Poirier. And it, it looks to me from, from what I can tell, I mean, obviously he's a favorite according to the odds makers. Not a huge favorite, but he's a favorite according yeah. to the odds makers. But it looks to me that it seems like damn near everybody is picking Dustin Poirier. And I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it because – you know, he's on the run. He's had the impressive wins over Connor. Uh, you know, he, he's the guy. Like, you, you think about it. And I know, look, I think Charles Oliveira is not that same guy that not, – look, he did used to quit a little bit. If he, if he yeah. wasn't ahead, if he wasn't the hammer, if he was the nail. If his eye maybe got poked a little yeah, bit. Yeah, man. It just, if it wasn't going it his like way, he, for a way out. he faded real quick. I You're don't right. think he's that guy anymore. Yeah. I don't think he's that guy anymore. I think that he does have heart. I think that he is, you know, a solid contender. So – I get why everybody's picking Dustin Poirier. I picked Dustin Poirier. But I'm telling you what, man, yep. as we're getting closer and closer to this, I'm wondering, Charles Oliveira is so damn dangerous, man, and he can snatch up submissions in a heartbeat. Yep. And I'm starting to wonder a little bit, man, is this, is this a much more dangerous fight than I think anybody is really giving credit for? And I think you're right. You know, and funny enough that I was watching our staff picks come and everybody was Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. So I, in turn, being devil's advocate, I went Charlie Olive. Did you win Olive? I yep. did. And you know, and mainly thing, the biggest thing that, that got me was was his performance against uh, Michael Chandler last time. You know, and just watching what he was able to do to get the title, the way that he was able to, the way that the way that he was able to use his hands and just showed good striking. Do I think he's at Dustin's level? No, not at all. When it comes to technicality, but is he good for a good couple in a row to, yeah. to hurt his opponent and then get a hold of him? Absolutely, and that's exactly what he did with Chandler. Yep. He hurt him, and then he got him down, and he was able to do what he needed to do. Right. But he – I mean, his striking looked better than ever. His confidence level – and I think with the fact of a lot of people, I think he ad has addressed – I think he got tired of hearing that, oh, did he give up in the right. past? Did he give up in the past? And that absolutely motivated him to get to what he's been doing right now. You know, So do I think he's going to allow himself to break right now? I don't think he has it in him because, one – I think he's showing that Brazilian pride where he's so prideful of the mm. fact that he was able to get take that belt back home for his country and for himself. I don't think he's going to give that up as easily. I think I think he's much more now he'd go out on his shield. But that being said, I think Dustin easily – well, I mean, not easily, but has a wonderful chance to yeah. win this fight. But part of me was You're just You're not like, going to out-heart Dustin Poirier, that's for sure. Right. Even though I, I believe, I believe no Oliver has answered those questions, yeah. you're not going to out-heart Dustin Poirier. Right. But – you can absolutely catch him in a submission. You know what I mean? I know he's a high-level black yep. belt. I know he's a great grappler, but Olivero is like that next level His stuff. submissions are so ridiculous. They're just so slick. I mean, like, kind of like what Hall goes out there. You were like, wait, where did that come from? Right. You know, he just slides in these moves, you know. But the fact that he's not afraid to throw hands now and actually has become decent. Oh, well, I want to say he's a good striker. I mean, I'm not going to say put him up there with, like, being one of the great strikers of the UFC, but he's a darn good fighter. And the yep. fact that he's got a killer ground game, dude, he's – he. I'm, I would not be surprised if he does get 
a submission victory over telling, Dustin. I'm telling I would you. not. I would not be like, oh my god, that was the craziest upset ever. Hot tea. I you know, know you. I know you're deep in the edit over there with the uh, yes. wholly original concept the where you were talking. <laughs> yeah. It's the quietest I've ever been on the podcast. <laughs> no, I know. You, I know. Look, I, again, you're, you're working, so I appreciate you just even taking a moment. But what do you think? I mean, I know you probably overheard a little bit of what we're talking about, but I mean. I, 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 are you picking Poirier? And, and if, if so, I mean, are, are, do you think Oliveira is being overlooked? I mean, I don't know. This, I, as we get closer, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm starting to feel like I feel like my, my, my needle's leading back the other way it, towards Oliveira. It, it's, it's funny, right? Because uh, for as odd a sport as this is, it, it's still a very much a sport of gut instinct and feeling, right? It's not a, it, as much as people want to pretend it is. This is not a sport of stats. Right. I, I don't think so. I agree. You know, I, I think stats kind of go out the window where people are just swinging limbs at each other. So I've been kind of going on form, right? Well, look, Dustin appears to have really just ratcheted up a level. He right. really seems to have just reached his new stride, almost his prime, right? He seems to have maybe some of the things that were holding him back before mentally have disappeared. I, I really think he's come onto his own. And then, as we get a little bit closer, so, you know, when this fight was announced, I thought, well, Dustin Wash is this guy, and we move on to the next fight, and then there's a real debate. But as we get closer, I get this niggling old feeling in uh, my gut. I'm telling you. And the size. I'm, Charles is big. Oh, he's huge. I mean, I mean if you like allowed biting in this fight, there's only one winner, and it's not Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Those pearly white chompers. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, he's going to blind them first with the lights. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to reflect, and then he goes in for the chomp. I, I think, I think <laughs> you guys are terrible. Man, it's got a great set of teeth. If oh, dude, they're, yeah. they're fantastic. Listen, as a British man, I can only be envious. You know what I mean? <laughs> as Fuck a guy that's missing half his teeth, I'm completely yeah. envious. But, uh, <laughs> no, look, I... I I'm starting to get the same as you, John. I don't know if my needle's leading the other way. I mean, I think it's sloping to the left right now. But um, if I don't know where it's... It, I wouldn't go as far as say I'm picking yeah. Charles, but certainly... It's a dangerous fight. You know, it just... I, I look at that Chandler fight, and I think, well, you know, Chandler had him hurt. But there was also a moment where Oliver had his back, and if you weren't a freak athlete like Chandler, yep. you yep. don't explode out of that to get back yep. on top. Yep. That's if, exactly right. If, if Charles gets Dustin's back, I don't think Dustin blows out of it and turns it around, Right. In which case, there's an issue there, right? You know? I'm telling you, man. I'm so intrigued that's by That's when that heart fight. has to show up for Dustin to get him out of it. That's, that's when those moments where you're just like, oh, he's done, he's done. Well, th this, that's and the real thing. The only person that wore him out was Khabib. That's the real right? thing, right? So you does know, the Habib heart come in? Broke where, it. Yeah, when Habib comes and holds Habib you. Habib breaks everybody. And you though. saw Habib break Dustin. Does he get in the same situation and show like, no, I've grown? And then he changes. Well, that would, that would be amazing. I mean, that's how the movie would be written, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Would be the script. But I'll tell you what's interesting is you, you can't forget as well, too, that, uh, you know, obviously, number one, Habib is Habib. No question about that. Number two, let's not forget about that environment that he was fighting in as well, right? The, the heat of that. Remember that event? That was the one where it was in the tent. Yes. And there was the heat. And also, yes, course, I loved it. <laughs> it was a great time, and I was happy to have gone. <laughs> well done, sir. You get to travel to Abu Dhabi again. Uh, and it, it was just, man, the, the, the temperature there was tough. It was also just like that, that the, the audience that was 100% Habib, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't know. Maybe some of those things will change. But, I, look, ultimately I picked Poirier, uh, but but I, I think this is a dangerous fight, and I am uh, I am super intrigued The fans are who wins this one. The fans <laughs> win. That is a solid cop out there. Uh, Amanda Nunes versus Juliana Pena. Okay, I want to ask you, and you touched on it earlier, right, because Amanda Nunes – is the GOAT. There's no question about it, right? To yeah. me, she is the women's GOAT. I do think, uh, as, as Kayla Harrison has been saying lately, I do think Chris Cyborg is the GOAT featherweight, but I do think Amanda Nunes is the GOAT female fighter. Um, she smashes everybody. I don't, I don't pick against Amanda Nunes. I'm not picking against yep. Amanda Nunes here. But I'll tell you what, Juliana Pena does bring some things to the cage that I think can make it interesting. Now, I, will it? I, I don't know. I mean, Amanda could absolutely go out there and smash her as well, and it would not shock me. But... I will say this, Juliana has the right game, and she's saying the right things. Yep. And I think this, I think I might be more intrigued for this Amanda Nunes fight than I have for any of hers in a long time. I mean, Juliana certainly talks a good game. I mean, she brings it, and I think she brings unique uh, mindset. She does bring a, a, a wealth of skills, but it's just a, it's a matter, something weird happens sometimes when these girls, the, the, the ladies get in there, they want to they turn it into a striking match, and they forget that they have other skills. Mm -hmm. And most people don't win when it becomes a striking match with Amanda Nunes. I mean, if, if Juliana can keep her on the move, you know, try to keep her. not Don't just square up and try to say, hey, let's, let's test chins. Let's test power. If that happens, I think it's going to be a short night. You know, I think she needs to wear Amanda down. She's got to take her deep where, you know, that's, but that's the tough thing. How do you get Amanda to expend 
energy without letting her throw punches and without her getting some sort of ground game. If she's going to try to get in there and try to just grab her and hold her against the cage and try to work her to get Amanda down, she's going to spend a lot of her energy as well. And if you, I mean, if you want to take Amanda at her word, Amanda says this is the best weight cut she's ever had. And look who she's wrestling and training with. She's training with fucking Kayla Harrison, right. dude. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I mean, like, Juliana is going up against probably, like, we've, like what I've always said, when somebody's going to be beating Amanda, it's when Amanda – does, the Amanda that we know doesn't show up. Right. It has to take a bad Amanda showing up for someone else, even on their best day, to win. Because Juliana is not going to go in there. She's not going to hurt Amanda with strikes. Right. She needs to get her down, take her back, do something. But Amanda's been training with the best of the best right now. And she's really pretty darn decent as well on she the is. ground, getting back up to where she needs to be. That being said, Juliana's saying everything the right. But, I mean – I feel like we've said this over and over again. Like somebody comes in and is like, oh, I'm confident, you know, I'm, and they're saying the right things. But then they get in there and they take a punch, and then you see something changes change everything. in their face. It changes everything. The same thing when the people fought Cyborg. Cyborg. Yep. You know, this, and this is the woman that crushed Cyborg's I soul. <laughs> I, I will say this. I, on, I, I am as intrigued by this fight as I was. I, no, I won't say by the Cyborg fight. I mean, Cyborg and Shevchenko are the, t are the fights with Amanda Nunes that I was most yeah. like, wow. It's not like I'm saying like, it's one of those things where like if you were if you were looking at like a video game or whatever, and you were looking at like their player rating or whatever, like right. Amanda's higher than Juliana. There's no question about oh, it. Yeah. But it's it's the styles make fights argument, right? What would you, Juliana what would you rate her? Do you, I mean, if you if you gave numbers or if you gave like letters, I'm not going there. She's sir. a solid. I'd say she's a solid 85 to 90. Oh I was, yeah, I was gonna say 86. How about yeah. that? All right, there you go. Yeah, so yeah. Solid 86. I mean, in terms of but how she in terms of the grappling game, yeah. And she's saying that look, she's saying the right thing. She's carrying herself the right. I do, I, well, as for carrying herself and like the work that she's done, we've said this over and over again. Like when these fighters have gone out there and started doing commentary work, did some other stuff where they're in front of the cameras. They are so amazing. When she she was throwing you back, oh, she her first answer was so slick. She's so polished. She She's was like so boom, boom, polished. boom. Well, John, blah, blah, blah. I was like, not only did she repeat the question, she threw the interviewer's name back in. I was like, this woman's good. Professional. This woman is a pro. Gave, gave a shout out to Camel McLaren for the for the oh, opportunity. Dude, she's like, was really, I enjoyed that. Throw, throw it out to the boss. I right? mean, she has a she has a future in fighting. Will will she be a future champ in that division right now with Amanda there? No, but does she have a bright future in MMA, whether it be commentary and doing other stuff? Absolutely. I mean, I love her Polish. personality. I love Polish. I love what she's doing. I mean, we've seen others go on and do it. Like Laura Senka does a great job. Phenomenal. Laura Senka was probably half as good of a fighter as what Juliana's right oh, now. And Laura would be the first to tell you that. And, she, she, and, yeah, you know I'm not, I mean? and I'm not trying not, to slight Laura by her. any she, means. She you know, would, yeah. I, I was a big fan of hers and watched her in Invicta and everything. But she's absolutely fantastic. She's found her calling. And I just feel like Juliana right now, she's going to she's gonna do well in MMA. But when it comes to when it's Amanda on the top, she's not going to breach She's not gonna breach that summit. That's right. not going to happen. But that doesn't mean she can't have a, a successful career still in MMA. Absolutely. And then outside of it afterwards, I think she's going to be even more appreciated. Just like look at DC. Look at what DC has been able to do and thrive after his MMA career. A lot of people now remember him more for just talking and enjoying the things, whether it be good or bad. Dominic Cruz does it. Dominic Cruz <laughs> doesn't seem to I, like it. You know what? I was going to get there. <laughs> uh, hell, let's just go to there, right? Dominic Cruz basically just, since you brought up Daniel Cormier's name, Dominic Cruz absolutely just. That bus that was just going outside, just he just threw threw pushed him right All right, so what do you guys it. make out? Because here's the thing is, obviously, we already have a story on MMA Junkie. I'm sure every other website out there has a story on it as well. I'm sure these comments are the hottest thing going. Yeah. All right. To me. I, I definitely think Dominic was being honest. Like I don't think he yeah. was he was lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I felt like he was just kind of needling a guy that he considers Absolutely. a buddy, a brother. I, he considers he, 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 he considers him later. a brother. I if, mean, if you didn't watch the whole scrum, he said later, "I consider him a brother." Yeah. So I just feel like this is the part that sucks sometimes, and maybe it's just it's because Dominic's personality, or it's the way he talks, or it's the way he delivers things. Yeah. But like, I feel like all the headlines out there are like Dominic Cruz just. You know, slashes. D oh, we did the same thing, and I, I fucking cringed, you yeah. know, because I felt like that wasn't the full context of it. Right. I mean, like, these two challenged it's themselves. Like, it's like he's busting balls. It's a bro, right? com bro competition. Like, I think they challenged themselves. They both have a, a familiar background in the whole wrestling game. Um, granted, they went to two different er you know, areas and how far one went as opposed to the other, but... To me, it feels like that playful, fun rivalry where it's like, I'm going to bust your balls. 
and now you have to say something next time that's going to be even better on me. You know, like I think there's definitely some truth in it because there's definitely the truth in it. But 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 Anik and Dominic Cruz are like meticulous tape yeah. watchers. They're like, it, and you know who committed. was the first one that both of them modeled themselves after? Brian Stan. Brian Stan. Brian Stan. Dominic Cruz. After Brian Stan used to go and do all these shit, and he would go and he would follow the media days. Brian and he Stan would, do would his show interviews. up to the media days and, and just listen and, in, get his own, and then answers. do his own interviews. Yep. And then Dominic start watch started come and watch that. Yep. John Anik saw that and watched that and started doing it. So all those cats got the same. Thing. I think this is, if anything, Dominic takes a lot of pride in his work that he does leading up to it. But I didn't feel like it was like, oh my god, he just took his bud to and the, I feel to the like, woodshed. And I feel know? like that's the way the coverage is out there right now. And, may, and maybe I'm misreading it, but to me, it didn't. Everybody I, took it way too serious. I think so too, man. I think. I so mean, too. I think there's definitely while there is seriousness in it, it's done with love that they can jab and they can laugh about it. Even like I thought somebody said, like, oh, was it, was it Dan that was saying like, oh, did, he saw Daniel in the background was like, listen to what Dominic's saying back to me, or did I make that up in my head? Was DC there today, and did Daniel hear him say something? No, like, no, 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 no. So, uh, Hooker, he said, no, but he was kind of like in jest, right? So Cormier was saying, like, oh, I'm going home to lick my wounds. You know, yeah. did you hear what Cruz said to me? And actually, uh, Brad Okamoto, he, he filmed uh, Bisping, DC, and Cruz all sitting together. And it, it, it tagged it the most dysfunctional commentary team you've ever seen. Yeah. And indeed, Bisbee was going, guys, 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 why don't we all? You know, like just, and you could just tell that they'd all been in a big, like, like poking each yeah, other. Right? It's just alpha male shit, you know. Yeah. And I think maybe, as one who could perhaps relate to this, being the smaller guy, <laughs> Cruz feels... I thought you were going to say an alpha male. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> no, 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 of course, no. of course. But, but I, think as, I think maybe Cruz feels... I don't know. I think Cruz feels he's the smartest guy in the room at all times. That's not a negative. That's not that. like a diss. I think that's just... I mean, in, in terms of like fight IQ, his fight IQ is out, yeah. it's out of the it's world. The and, it's, and it's listen, crazy. And he does the work. He does the work. His criticisms of Cormier about, oh, he doesn't do his research. He comes in, he kind of blags it a little bit and gets out. I don't, those are not the first times I've heard those criticisms. It's definitely true. Yeah. DC, but in, in fairness, DC also has like 50 projects uh, yeah, going on, a, right? Yeah. So, but and, and to be honest with you, I don't think... Uh, the, the the UFC crew, the ESPN crew, like I don't think they care if DC does tape study. That's, well, what that's the, the thing. You ask any Felder's not doing crazy tape study, probably. Brandon's or like most of these other cats, you know, if if Anthony, uh, you know, Lionheart and these guys, the guys on the fucking desk, you think they're going back home and doing crazy shit? I think None Anthony does. I think Anthony does. Well, maybe, maybe he is. You know, I, I mean, does. but I mean, like, I guarantee half those guys up there aren't doing the crazy leg work that that uh, Dominic does. But, he, but, he, but he, but he, but he knows that he can bust his boys' does, balls. DC's like at the top. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I assume Dominic Cruz is at the top of it, yeah. and, and Anik at the top of it. So, yeah, to, I, I guess that's just what I want to throw out there because I saw all the coverage start to happen. And I saw social I feel media so bad light that up. It became so big. I do too, I, and I wonder. I mean, I guess the good thing is that both Dominic and DC can probably just laugh it off or whatever. I mean, like I said, they consider themselves DC's brothers. Now DC's going to have to one-up it. DC's going to have to find something He's going to gonna have to slam him somewhere. So I, I, I think people kind of misread the room a little bit in some of that coverage, man. I really think he was just kind of busting balls, so we'll see. All right, listen, uh, we'll go back to, to, to Dominic later, but I did want to ask you, since we were talking about the co-main event, uh, Kayla Harrison, all right? You, you see, uh, I believe it was Aaron Bronstetter uh, talked to, to Dana White today, and Dana White confirmed, like, hey, we are actually – uh, in some conversations with her team, which, you know, originally he had said, uh, I think she should stay where she is, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, think, I, I think I said at the time, I think that's some posturing right now. I think that they are yep. interested in her, um, and now we're seeing How that is the truth. Be? You have to be. Um, so what do you guys think about this? I mean, do, do you think – I'm, I'm just – I don't know if the UFC is and, – and, and by the way, I asked Amanda Nunes about it today, and she said, hey – it's up to her. She's got to make her decision, you know, um, because I do wonder, like, do they want – and I spoke to Kayla recently, and I was like, do, would you prefer to avoid it if you ha or, or do you welcome it? And it sounds like they're both just like, hey, if it's got to happen, it's got to happen. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I think that probably could. There was a part of me that thought, like, if they ever became really, really good friends, I could see where Amanda's like, take go for featherweight. Do right. your thing. I, I'll hold on to the bantamweight or whatever. But between the two of them being – two just badass ladies they might decide at some point you know for you i'm willing to fight you for the i know paycheck you're willing that comes with it. for the paycheck that's right, going to come you bring with it, it if you bring it kayla see it's weird because like i feel like honestly like bellator would be the best place for her to go if you're talking about like having multiple fights and but i mean if you're talking about what you could do in the ufc like the, the ceiling of the financial uh, pay has to be much higher than what bellator could pay but but yeah. 
But I think what you'd have to do is you can't just bring her in right away and put her against Nunes, right? Like, even though she has an undefeated right. record, even though she's a PFL champ. What do you think? you got to give her one fight, two fight. I mean, you, 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 you s- and you set her up, right? Yeah. You give her somebody that you think she can absolutely that's what, destroy. That's what's tough, though, because you know how much money she wants. And it's like, we don't want to give her a gimme fight either and bring in the same thing when they brought Chandler. And we knew he was getting a pretty decent paycheck, but they didn't give him any chumps for his first fight right. either. But you've, you've got to figure that she's got to fight two or three times. At or least twice. At least two it times. Can't not, or it just feels like enough. you're just like, okay, you're just bringing the stud in, and then all of a sudden you're going to get a big pay. And then what happens if she loses? Then you're like, okay, now we start giving her oh. uh, the lower level, yeah. you know, and, at some point. And they I don't mean, even have a 145-pound division. you got to get your money's worth, I think. If, if you're going to give her the money, she deserves the money. If you're going to give her the money, give her some chance to get that PR wing going, you know. Let her work two or three fights, you know, where the whole hype about around her gets bigger. And then it's just only going to make that inevitable meeting between her and Amanda be that much bigger, worth that much more money. And who knows? I mean, I I still believe as much as Amanda's enjoying herself, I think she's enjoying the fact that she's able to do both divisions. I still feel like the sunset is coming. Sure. The end is coming Absolutely. for her. I just don't know when. I, I just I think we said last year that I think we, we picked like within two – Maybe like two – I don't even feel like three years. I don't think she'll make three years. I feel like – I don't we, either. I think we'll be lucky if we get two more years By out the of way, her. By the way, fight week, and she's the one pushing around the baby today, right? You know what I mean? She, like You could tell she absolutely adores being a, amazing. a mother. She – the, the, she it, made me a little jelly she, when she was talking about it. I was like, damn. She's she, like, if you guys don't have one, I'm telling you, you would like it. Or she, was spot, I was like, she was spot on, though, when she talked about, you know, with the joy of being a parent. And, yeah. You know, she said it, too, right away. You know, she – and you're right. She was absolutely beaming as she was talking about yeah. this. Boy, she was so relaxed and, today. And she, so she was relaxed make, today. She was, she was like – because Reagan was looking at the whole time, and like, I swear she, she was, was like saying, saying mommy. mama. She was saying mommy. Like, yeah, every yeah. once in a while. And then she was just like – and I was like, dude, I was so happy for her because, I mean, like – I remember her talking about it beforehand. It was always about, oh, when Nina's going to get pregnant or whatever, going to do this. And, you know, there was that build up and that lead up to it. And then there was when she was pregnant. And then when they actually had the baby, you know, and then just seeing her now, I mean, like, she's so, she's got, her life is absolutely, right. I'm sure there's some small little thing that's not perfect, but it seems absolutely perfect right now. Yeah. She's on top of two divisions. She's making good money. She's getting the fights that she wants, and she's absolutely loving everything about her life right now. It's so happy to and see. I think she, and, and she's got a lot of money in the bank, and, you know, yeah. she, I, I think she's comfortable. I, I wonder if the play is – because, listen, I, I mean, I've talked to Kayla multiple times about this, and she's always been very consistent. She said, look, I'm not saying I won't fight Amanda. I will. But if we do it, it's going to be respectful. It's going to be a competition. It's going to be, you know yep. – she's like, I think it would suck to have to split the gym apart, and we don't want to do that. So – I wonder if the play is – And at what division? I mean, obviously – Well, it has to 45, be yeah. It's yeah. got to be 45. So I wonder if the play, though, is to sign with the UFC and then Amanda walks away and you fight for the title. And the, But, I mean, at that point, the UFC, do they get their money's worth? I mean, I think they can. Like, they can make – I mean, if the PFL can make Kayla a star, the UFC can definitely make Kayla a star. Kayla's going to go in and wreck shop, man. I know. She is just going to fucking wreck these girls. She's doing it right now. For people that think that Kayla's not UFC – top UFC caliber right now, you're, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. She is absolutely fantastic. She is probably going to pro- be proven to be, if she hasn't already, the best Olympian that's made the crossover to MMA out I of agree. all of them. Henry Cejudo was absolutely amazing what yep. he was able to do at the end of it. But what Kayla's going to be able to do, I think at the end of the day, she's going to surpass them all. So what do you think? Where do you want to see her? Do you want to see her in the UFC or do you want to see her in Bellator? I'd like to see her in the UFC. I mean, I think the Bellator should just wreck shop, but if Bellator, has a, if Bellator has the paycheck to give her the money and she's happy with it, I think she'll fight more often in the Bellator. That's it. There's no division. But I guess yeah. I guess that if she comes to the UFC, then the UFC would be committing that, hey, we're going to build this division around yeah. you. Yeah. And I just feel like Bellator, like Scott Coker, they, they understand, like, they're not afraid to put their, their, their marquee fighter out there. They, right. If they have somebody that's good and that people want to pay attention to, they're going to make them fight. Yep. I mean, if anything, they'll just make a whole bra- they'll make a Grand Prix around her and make a tournament, you know, and then hopefully find some other stars, you know, around it or something. I mean, and if she's into it, I mean, that would give her, you know, maybe at least two or three fights that year or something, maybe culminating into the the, the title. Maybe how many does it usually work out? To about four. Yeah, usually three or four. Something depending. like that. I mean, like that's fantastic. We ain't we're not getting that out of Amanda in the UFC. I mean, we're not getting. I mean, like I think I think. 
me personally, if she goes to Bellator, at least I know we'll see the Cyborg fight, and that would be yeah. an amazing fight, right? That would be. A, that would I be just awesome. wonder, like, I, I kind of would like to see her in the UFC as well because I think she deserves that platform. But I just wonder if, like, there's behind this, and I haven't heard this, so I'm not trying to like throw something out there that I know because I, I haven't. But I wonder if there's like, because if she, if she comes to the UFC and she doesn't fight Amanda, then I feel like it's a waste. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like I need to see her fight one or the other. And if she goes to Bellator, I know she'll fight Cyborg. I understand why she doesn't, why she may not want to fight Amanda. Obviously, the teammate situation, all that. Yeah. But I would just feel like it's a damn waste if she comes and then doesn't fight her. I mean, that would be the biggest possibility of a paycheck immediately that, that the UFC has. Yes. But in time, maybe somebody would rise. But would they rise to a level of where where this fight could be? No. Yeah. I mean, because you got the goat, and like if you could, if you that would be a literal changing of the guard. Because then at that point, you know, if you beat the goat, and the goat retires. Then you'd have to think, well, okay, right now Kayla Harrison's got to be the most dominant UFC or women's fighter that there is, you know. And then, then that begs the discussion, and then they they start bringing the contenders, and then maybe you start building something. But if that fight doesn't happen, I mean, sure, would it suck? Absolutely. I mean, but would there still be other great fights? It'd still be great to see Kayla come in and put on highlights. Kayla, she makes her her fight she's with great. She, she's just she's the complete package when it comes to. Being able to sell a fight, yep. she looks great, and she goes out there and absolutely dominates her performance. I mean, she has absolutely everything going for her. I'm intrigued, and I think man. people, I think the fact that I mean, like that is a that's a, I mean that's an American that's make it get behind like the, everybody. The, you want to give somebody that can instill like country pride that people can actually start going out there and getting all the ridiculous like USA chants, which I absolutely love, but it just sounds weird because we never. <laughs> Pretty, it just sounds pretty so weird. But I come from a college where everybody says O-H-I-O, and I love it. So <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how it plays out, man. I'm intrigued by it. All right, Jeff Neal versus Santiago Ponsonibio. Yeah. Obviously, this fight is going to be, uh, on paper, it looks like it's going to be a phenomenal fight. It took a little bit of a weird turn with the arrest yeah. of Jeff Neal uh, for DUI. I will say, I think uh, Jeff handled it like a pro. I mean, obviously, he yeah. came in today. It was his first public comments. I think I hadn't seen anything before. Yeah. Uh, he talked about it. Um, if, if you haven't seen it, you know, he basically said, look, uh, don't think I've been out drinking every night during the middle. You know, it was Thanksgiving. And if you have, that's to, no problem. And, and, yeah, and it's not an issue to drink every this day. This is the MMA Roadshow <laughs> where we drink hashtag <laughs> Frosty Chef, Beverages. I'm not judging you, bro. <laughs> Trust me. I'm not judging. But I, I do think, uh, you know, fans and, and betters and people trying to break things down, I think they're trying to see, like, hey, is this dude, like, taking training seriously? Yeah. And he said, look, absolutely taking training seriously. Had a night out. I think from what you can gather, he, he didn't obviously give a lot of specifics, but it sounds like him and his girl maybe had like a little bit of an you know like a, an argument. But from you know no not domestic violence type stuff. Yeah. There's no charges like that. But I think they just got into an argument. It was a single car accident, from what I understand. So I think maybe he just got distracted, or maybe so yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, and then of course the weapons charge, which sounds like a big deal, um, is, is not necessarily yeah. It, no. it, especially in, and I'll just say this, especially in Texas. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Yeah, my parents. I mean, my parents carry guns in their car. I say, I for carry zero you know, reason whatsoever. The only beef, the only issue I have with him, I'm mean, like, you know, like if you're gonna carry, you're not supposed to drink. Right. Don't drink. Just leave your firearm. But I get it. You know, like but, I mean, but in Texas, like people have it like in their dash. You know, yeah. there, in, you know. In the, in, yeah, which is probably the case. So I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> not like it's not like he it's the boogeyman. It. He's like, oh, he's a, he's so evil. He's carrying his gun like. And, and he, dude, I, I carry guns sometimes to go to the supermarket. He like, was kind of okay. laughing. Like he didn't make any excuse. By the way, he did say, like, I'm the dumbass that did it, so I gotta yeah. own up to it. But I thought that was probably one of the best lines he said because it was just like it was self defacing, but it was humorous. It was humorous, but he you did know. say he did say too. He's like, and he said. So by the way, if anybody didn't see it, he uh, so he he took a um, for the blood alcohol level, he took a blood test rather than a breathalyzer. The results of that aren't back yet. So he actually thinks maybe that the blood test well, he'll be under the limit. We'll see if he is or not. Uh, which would mean, I think, a dismissal of charges. Um, but it was funny because he even said, he's like, it made it sound like I'm driving around, you know, drunk with a Mac-10 in my yeah. lap. Just, he's like, it's not exactly like that. So, uh, it, But it is true. Like, when you hear DUI and weapons charges, you're like, oh, no. And yeah. he's like, not exactly like that. So, I don't know. Anyway, it just, I, I guess, look, I think this is going to be a fantastic fight. Santiago Ponzinibbio said, look, I was Put worried for a day or two. Um, I went Ponzinibbio. Did you? I went Ponzinibbio. I went Party Boy. <laughs> He's like, you're so That's ridiculous, his new Jeff dude. Party Boy Neil, man. You're so ridiculous. You're like, hey, man, you really shouldn't factor this in at all. But I'm, ah, Party Boy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest. I, you know, look. His I'm, power is fantastic. But Palm Disney was super dangerous. I just don't know how – How? I mean, he's had good – I just don't know how back he is. I know. And I, Jeff well, listen, his power band is just fantastic. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, 
I, I will say this. I did factor in everything that's going on in my in my pick. Like, I'm not saying that I would, wouldn't pick Ponzinibbio anyway. Ponzinibbio is a fantastic fighter. Yeah. But I, I'll be honest. Not so much that I don't think Jeff Neal is taking training seriously, but I just think, like, dude, this has to be a has distraction. Has to be on your mind. It has to be. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I, you're right. I went Ponzinibbio. I still went Party Boy. <laughs> you're so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> don't judge him by this, but his nickname's Party Boy now. Uh, phenomenal fight there. All right. Cody Garbrandt versus I Pac- say that with respect. Oh, all, all due respect, of course. And now I know it's, that he's a he's a CCW holder. Shit, he's got my uber respect. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cody Garbrandt moving down the flyway to take on Kai Car France. Um, okay, uh, you've seen the social media pictures we saw him today. I will say this, Cody Garbrandt, I think a lot of times I feel like he has a chip on his shoulder. It didn't feel that way today. It felt like he was honestly like yeah. kind of happy to talk to people. He talked about the word he kept using was inspired. Inspired. Um, you know, wanted to, to focus on that. Um I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm I'm intrigued by this move to flyweight, and you know, from from talking to him and talking to other people around him, it just sounds like like bantamweight was really just like super easy for him to make, and that maybe this was the move he should have made all along. In fact, he even said that. I think I think he said, "I, I wish I would have done this earlier because it, it, it's forced me to be disciplined. It's forced me to focus a little bit more." Um, man, I'm I'm intrigued by this fight because. You know, on the one hand, it could turn out to be a total disaster. I mean, what if he misses weight, or what if it turns out that you know his chin's gone after cutting weight, or or whatever yeah. the case may be. And if the power's really not there. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I, and and look, you're not getting you're not getting a gimme fight in Kai Car France. It's not like you're nope. walking in and be like, hey, we'll set you up with an easy one. But I will say this: if it is true, and what Cody says is like, man, this has inspired me. I'm I'm more dialed in than ever. To when Cody Garbrandt is executing. My God! I mean, there's. I mean, that dude. I mean, it's still one of the greatest title-winning performances of all time. I know yep. that was five years ago at this point, but yep. that was still one of the greatest performances of all time. And and an Ohio fellow as well. No, I'm like, it's almost a gimme at that point. And I've always kind of homered for him being an Ohio guy. But I mean, I've loved his performances. When his, pa- if his power is truly still there, he's going to be dangerous. I just hope that the cardio and, and everything that needs to do, like you said, if, he, if he's not normally too heavy, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe he'll be able to go a good solid three rounds, you know, 100%, no problem, you know, and still being able to throw, you know, heavy hands. Um, Kai's super, super tough. Kai's got a lot of crazy weapons. I mean, he, the thing Cody has to watch, he's, it's not just going to be hands. It's going to be hands. It's going to be kicks. Right. It's going to be all these sort of things. And I mean, and – you know, even when I look back at that Dominic fight, when he was sort of toying around with Dominic the whole time, I was still nervous. I was like, dude, stop playing. Like, stop playing. You're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. So hopefully, you know, if he sort of has a good – if he's feeling himself this fight, you know, hopefully it's it's real and he, he, he stays smart and, and understands that you made a decision to go down to this division. Don't fuck up your debut in it. Like, don't – Go half, don't you know? I, it's not like I'm gonna say half ass it like he did and train and prepare for it. Don't go out there and and do something stupid in that performance just because you're like whatever, because this is not a, the person to do it. He's not starting at the bottom of the barrel. I mean, right? Like, Kai Carl France is a dangerous, dangerous guy. I, know. And I, I feel like he was a guy that we were talking about when he was making his his like sort of first UFC fights and after he was doing I was like everybody was like this is the guy you got to watch yep. this guy's got a gr- the trajectory to go up to the top and, and this is one of those fights that if Kai can get this win over Cody that's a it's a Big outstanding feather in his win cap right there. huge feather in his cap you know and that just sets his trajectory going elsewhere so I mean like he's going to be coming looking to try to do his best and he said all the right things as well saying that they prepared for the best Cody Garbrandt that's going to be up there they're preparing I think that they went out there and they prepared for the bantamweight. Right. They went out there preparing for a bigger guy that throws heavy hands. But that's the thing, man. Going down, if, if Cody didn't do the leg work and he, and if he starts getting depleted, if he's only got one good round in him, Kai's going to toy out, toy with him. Oh, the second and third issue. round is going to be not very good for Cody. But, man, uh, I – my picks suck this year anyway, so I'm going to homer the hell out of it as well. well and I just trust the fact that – I feel like this. He's made this move, and and he's all in. And I love, and this is another guy. I love hearing about his mindset and where he's at. He seems like he's in a great place as he well. He does, you know. And it's just he like does. If, if if he's coming in here feeling good, and he and he and he did truly have a good camp, and this weight cut was as easy as as he makes it seem to be, he doesn't look bad. 
But see, at that's all. the thing I mean, is that, like, and again, I know this sometimes sounds like we're just talking about intangibles, but I do think those intangibles translate to the cage sometimes. Yeah. Like, when he used to come in and just felt like a chip was on his shoulder, I'm like, why are you harboring all this anger right now? Yeah. Like, what, what, what are you angry at? You know what I mean? It's a lot to weight to carry into a fight. It's a lot. It's a lot of weight to carry. Yeah. I mean, and I didn't think he, I didn't think he needed that. You know, and today, I don't know, man. He just, he struck me as being in a very good place. I li- again, I like the, the the inspired talk. I, I, I like where he's at. I'm gonna, I, I knew you would homer for Garbrandt. Obviously, you're always going to homer for the Ohio guys, and that's yeah. what. But I went Garbrandt as well, man. I went, did you? I went Garbrandt as well because I just feel like. Well, you're leading the pack, so I maybe I did. Maybe I picked right. Man, I feel like if he is, if, if the if as long as the weight cut isn't a disaster, then he's okay. But. I mean, you look at the pictures and stuff, and it's like, dude, it doesn't look like he's waiting till the end for some kind of re- – you know, I don't know exactly what he's walking around at right now, but it doesn't feel like he's waiting until the very end to, to you know, ha- have some hard weight cut to get him there. So um, I'm uh, I'm intrigued by that. So I went I Cody Garber. Pick, pick I think you. I think we can I think we can actually stay at this point, and we can't jinx you at this point. You're going to be the champ. I don't – I hope. I hope so. I think you I'm got quite a big lead. No, uh, Simon Samano cut into my lead a little bit. I think I'm only up by three now. Is it? I yeah. Think, oh, maybe. I had a couple. I had a couple setbacks. For a while the there, you had, I felt like I was like six like, or seven. Yeah. I think the lead's like three now, so it's it's close. There's two cards know. left. It's close. It's not going to baby. I'm, I'm, We're not supposed to talk about it. We're I'm not supposed to talk I'm about it. I'm going to put my money down that the road. Show, one of the road show hosts oh, is going to be the champion. Man, I, 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 that way both of us. Because Oscar, if you don't know this, like on our in our staff picks. Like in the stat picks, there's a little trophy that goes next to your name. When not you next have to it. money. Right not now, only one money. of us has it. Right Who's now, that? Who's, who's got the trophy? I got the trophy. This big guy over here? Yeah. Can you cool. believe that, 2018 boy? champ, the first time they let us oh, do it. Oh, man. Morgan's been waiting, and this I'm, time I'm, he's I'm, crushing I'm it. I'm always like second or third, and this year I'm in you the You had lead. a big lead at one I point. Well, you you know, said like six or seven. I thought it was like closer to ten. I was like, dude, it's a shoe in I mean, it's good, it's good that you feel – Good about coming first. I always prefer to come second. You yeah. know that way. <laughs> it's all about multiple Sex. comes. As he clips the bit in pub talk about having chlamydia. Carry on. <laughs> oh, the koala talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If people didn't know that, right? Like koalas are just bearers of Rid- chlamydia. No, no, no. Koalas are riddled with chlamydia. They are the animal outside myself that carries the most chlamydia in the animal <laughs> kingdom. They're just riddled. What that smell was. Well, listen, <laughs> that's the other one. But no, yeah, no, apparently they're riddled with it. <laughs> I, I remember hearing it. It's like that one of those weird animal facts you hear. And I was like, it's stuck in the back of my head. I was like, that's so strange. But I'm never going to forget that fact. The more you know. The more you know. It's like when you find out that, I don't know, donkeys love eating ass. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I was just trying to pull out a brand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most incredulous I've ever heard Morgan sound. What? <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> oh my God! What is wrong? I totally Jesus. made that up. It's I only totally Wednesday on Fight Week <laughs> as well, bro. I totally made that up. I, I no, no donkeys yeah, were harmed gonna, like, in my, <laughs> my life. Throw out a fact that you actually knew, but like that, nah, that's the that fact was, that, that you was made not up. a fact I knew. I just made that up. Oh, made that up. phenomenal! All but right. If it proves to be true, then that's even <laughs> more fantastic. <laughs> No donkeys were harmed in the making of that joke. So ridiculous. <laughs> He's like, that's why they call him a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> See? All right. Holly and Piva versus Sean O'Malley kicks off the main card. Uh, uh, Holly and Piva, by the way, uh, is a dangerous fighter. I will say this. Sean O'Malley admitted that. He said, look, I'm not overlooking this guy. He yeah. is dangerous. Um, Holly and Piva did. You know, have to go through some damage last time to pick up the victory, but he did it. He never gave up. Sean O'Malley said, I give him credit for that. You know, I think my guy Kyler Phillips won, but I'm still going to give him credit. Um, that was a good fight. Sean O'Malley, uh, you know, catches heat. And, and and understandably so, I guess. You know, some of the comments he makes, like, I get it, why people don't like hearing, like, oh, I'll fight the unranked guys for the for the same amount of money. But, like, honestly, it's true. Yeah. It's just nobody likes to hear it. You know what I mean? And I loved – I'm sorry – I loved his unranked champion gear. I just, I think it's like the biggest troll ever. I love, it. I, I, I'm all in on Sean O'Malley. I think, yep. I think, he, I, first of all, I think he's a better fighter than he gets credit for. I understand why he's not ranked right now. I, I, I too totally, totally get that, and I understand why people don't like him. And, and I get it, man. When you're, when you're brash and bold like that, people aren't gonna like you. But I'm telling you, if you are sleeping on Sean O'Malley, I don't think you're being honest about his skills. Yep. The dude. The dude is talented, and he's uh, he's and, and how about the fact? And look, people aren't gonna like that he said this, but I love that he said it. He's like, how many millionaires do you know that aren't ranked? And it's like, dude, yeah. I you know think about what he's been able to do at his age. 
you and know. it's not just from fighting, which is even the the other part that's that, right. he, that he claims. Well, how about back, this? You know? He's also just guaranteed himself a pay rise from Dana just because he's already been out there advocating for fight and pay. He's right. gonna be like Dana's gonna be like, yeah, get that guy a pay rise. I mean, I, I love everything. I mean, his attitude, his swagger, everything that he brings to it. I mean, like, he's just fantastic. I mean, he, he's such a personality. But the great thing about him, you know. Is he brings it. He can fight. I mean, his striking is fantastic. I mean, he just comes at weird, crazy angles, but his jujitsu game is just fucking sick, man. Yep. Like, this kid is so good. You know, when we watched the quintet and we watched some of the other ones, we saw these cats go out there. This was a guy that you knew they were all paying their attention at. They were like, yep. we got to watch this dude. Yep. And, I mean, and he proves it every time. I mean, this is uh, – Pilot is – is good. He's a good fighter. He's dangerous. He's strong. He's got a lot of heart. But man, I just feel yeah. like Piva needs credit. Like if you if you're not, I mean, I get it. He's maybe an under the radar kind of guy. But he's right. always impressed me. He, he's, and he, he shows a lot of heart. And he's got it. I mean, like this would be one of those fights that if people didn't know who he was, this would be that fight where he definitely gets on everybody's radar. Piva definitely has the most to gain out of this, right? Yes, if Pi, for if, 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 sure. If Piva's the guy that pulls off the win, you know, you shut down. Sean O'Malley, now all of a sudden somebody knows who you yeah. are. But People are uh, going to be like, oh, O'Malley, we, we just expected you to win. You know, yeah. we just blah, blah, blah. You said you didn't want to fight any uh, any hard fights. You wanted the easy fights or whatever. But everything, this this little sort of empire that Sean's built off to the side, doing ju ju just being himself and building it is mm -hmm. it's fantastic. I mean, it's a model that if, the, if a fighter has the personality and has a platform, this is kind of the guy, but maybe not everything that he does. I mean, like, if you don't want to advocate all the weed and all the other stuff. I mean, yeah, like, it's not going to be for everybody. You know, but what he's done is a fantastic thing. I mean, like, and, you, and you've seen that, like, the, this is the day and age of the TikTok stars and the, the social media kids that are going out there and just making a living for themselves right. doing this shit. And he's used his platform, and he's bold, he's brash, but, fuck, he backs it up, man. I, I love everything about this kid. The only thing too. I always worried about him was – when we started, we were wondering if it, if it was going to have leg issues, if, if there was going to be that weird sort of freakish leg thing that would just pop up every once in a while, like if he was going to be injury prone, if there was going to be something that just sort of spiked this trajectory, you know, and it doesn't seem like he has that issue right now. I mean, but, I mean, who knows? I mean, like the, the, the sky's the limit for this kid, you know. I just hope something super stupid and random like, his body fighting him for some reason, you know, being the end, being what causes him to not make it to where he could be because he he should be a future. I mean, we I think we've said it before. I mean, like he has all the capability to be a future champ, you know. And, uh, I think so. He's definitely a future st uh, a I, star. A in the star sport. already. Yeah. yeah, he's already star. He's already, already star. So I, yeah. I I I did pick Sean O'Malley here, but I, I want to let you know I'm not sleeping on Holly and Piva, man. I I've yeah. always been high on Holly and Piva, and it's finally starting to click for him, and so. uh We'll see how things play out. That's, uh, it's a great pay-per-view. The prelims are great. Josh Emmett and Dan Ige, uh, man, That's pretty cool. two, two guys that, first of all, is going to be absolute fireworks. And two guys that I don't know who you, you, you cheer for as a person, right? I mean, they're both great dudes. Um, Ige, you know, Papa Ige, uh, you know, a little frustrated last time out. But, it, you know, it, it said he's in a good place now. And Emmett, meanwhile, has had this 18-month layoff and, and really, man, got choked up. You know, I didn't know the, the loss he had dealt with. Talked about losing a brother. Talked yeah. about losing his grandfather. And I was I – was, I, I didn't know that either. And I was like – because, you know, we're editing or whatever, but I start, you could hear how he got thick with emotion. I look at him, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I didn't realize what was going on, you know. Knew the injuries he was battling, but yeah. had no idea that he was dealing with that type of personal loss as well. So that's a phenomenal event – or a phenomenal card, I should say. Pedro Munoz versus Dominic Cruz. Um – Man, Dominic Cruz, uh, a big moment for him, man. Dominic Cruz, when he's executing and when he's, uh, you know, when he's that guy, he can dominate. And we'll see if he uh, can do so against Pedro Munoz, who's been that guy. And I kind of joked with him, right, he's on the Legends Tour, right? I mean, he's been fighting all the best of the best. And, and Pedro, I think Pedro, and I hate to say it, I think Pedro may finally be in that spot where you're like, okay, this guy's probably not going to hold a title, but – He's just always in damn good fights, and he's not afraid yeah. of fighting the absolute best out there. It's a, it's a great fight. I mean, there's some of those cats, kind of like, you know, when you think of, like, like a Clay Guido. Guida. Guida. God, I don't know why I fucking said Guido, because Guido, you're like a Guido. <laughs> like Clay Guida, man. Um, do I think Clay's going to be a champ? No. no. But do I love every time I see him on the fight card? Absolutely. Pedro's another one of these cats that you know what you're going to get. He, he's, he's just a, a, a wonderful guy to, like, you know, I, sw I switched to Pedro, and we were talking about Danny Gabe. Um, right? We were talking about Ige. Did we oh, switch? Oh, wow. The 
frosty beverages are hitting. We were talking about Pedro Munoz. <laughs> All right, we were talking about Pedro. Okay, I thought so. We were talking about Emmett, and then I saw the Ooh, cute the waitress. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Is that what the show? Dude, they, I will say, Sierra Gold, Sierra, Gold, Sierra Gold over here is doing all right. Got on talent. I know. All right. I saw, all right. Boobies got to me. She's got great boobs. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it out. Okay. Right, so yes, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> but no, Pedro. I mean, like, he's the kind of cat that uh, will he ever be a champ? No. But you know, will Clay be a champ? No. But do both guys every time you see him because you know what you're going to get on fight week they give great interviews they have great stories and they're pure emotion and they're always been absolutely 100 percent honest and open every time mm-hmm. you see them you know like even when he was struggling when he f- wasn't feeling like he was getting his his due his due shot like he felt like you know i've been going out and they're putting up the wins the ufc's not giving him what he needs to be he but he would show back up for another fight you know and you knew what you were going to get you know it's fantastic. I mean, like, the UFC needs guys like him um, just in terms, not just for the fact of, like, oh, they need them as, like, fight fillers, but then you need representatives like that. Because those are the kind of cats that you're, like, when you look at guys, when you're, like, you try to introduce somebody to the sport, and you're, like, well, give me give me some of your favorite fighters. Give me guys that you think would be good to watch their fights. Mm-hmm. He's, like, one of those cats that you say, yeah, watch this fight. And like, this fight with Cruz is going to be fantastic. Going back to Emmett, an Ige fight's going to be fantastic. I mean, Please. like... M and boobies. <laughs> this bar does bring some talent, though, and they're, they've been very attentive. And I lose my—I'll I, I, be honest—I I lose my mind when I see a nice pair of boobs. Oh, so and then a couple, <laughs> I lost my track of where I was thinking after the bartender walked or the the server so walked by, guys? and he was giving my—he was giving me shit. Yeah, he did. No, because the server walked talking by about a different fighter, and I started talking about a different fighter because I was thinking about boobs. Hold on. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's gone. The cold coffee. Well, no, I had to turn off because he set his gear down and oh. it was like making a bunch of noise. Right? Oh, down. I thought you about. I thought you were turning me down because I. You said I was about to talk about tits, and no, I was no, like, no, tits is "Oh well, let me tell you, there are <laughs> a couple of contenders to the throne in this place. Let me tell you." I'm telling you, this place brings it, and it's in close proximity. Um, Sierra Gold. Sierra Gold. Right Sierra, right not the like solid gold, which I Sierra uh, gold, gold is Sierra gold, gold, but with two D's on the end, so it's like double uh, D. <laughs> see what you did there. No, we're is really? lads, lads, lads. This is going off the is rails. Really oh, I get it. It's a boob. Thing. Yeah, like double tits. D. I get it. Okay, good. <laughs> Jesus. Well, we oh, oh, well, this may be an appropriate time to bring up Ty Tuivasa, <laughs> who who probably had the line of the press conference today, too. right? Oh, wow. <laughs> he probably had the line of the press conference or the press conference. Gee, now I'm doing it. Uh, the media day. Where uh, he was asked how many shoes. God bless John Morgan for keeping this fucking thing going. Right? I know. There's got to be one pro in the the team. He said, How how many shoes have you done? He's like, I don't know. How many times a priest been in the church? church. (laughs) Beautiful. That was pretty good. Love Ty Tui Boss. All right, listen. uh, Who'd you pick in that one? I picked Ty. I I feel like we hire a homer for Ty. It was a homer pick. Yeah, I mean it's hard. Those don't get Sakai, published unless Sakai, he gets bumped to the main yeah, card. Yeah, I mean Sakai's a, that's a fantastic fight as well, and Sakai has every possibility to win that fight. I mean he's got great durability; he could push Ty, and and I think we've seen with Ty, he he just it's at the very end it's just pure grit mm-hmm. and heart that gets him when you know when he starts getting a little behind. But yeah, it's hard to get to pick against a dude because you just like that dude. It's fun. I mean, he's just so fun. He's absolutely man. fun, and potentially uh, going to keep Dan Hooker from appearing on the final episode of... of <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Should, should we promote that? Should we say about the possibility? No. Since we haven't really well, said... Well, I mean, we can... Look. It's not even that be like the final. It'll just be the end of this chapter. Well, you listen, your, your audience, uh, I think at this point, well aware of who I am. And, and, and yeah, so I mean, we are the original pub talk. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the new, younger, fresher pub talk <laughs> could With better ha- accent. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, <laughs> we we might be doing one on Sunday. It depends on basically essentially how hectic Ty's after party yeah. gets. And uh, if we do that one, that will be the last for uh, I don't know. The immediate yeah, future. That's Dan's, Dan's to be going continued. To, Dan's going to York and then flying back home, right? Yeah, yeah and, and I, I fly to London on a Monday. Oh, so yeah. It's actually, yeah, so it's uh Yeah, it's a weird one, man. Like when we started we kind of just assumed he'd be here indefinitely and then he wasn't, the bastard. <laughs> Uh, That's hilarious. Yeah. So it up, yeah, because it ended up only being like a month, right? Wait, dude, I I had sponsorships organized by episode two, and then by episode three he was going home. It was, yeah. It was killer. So, but I, but I'm trying. And to I guess Hattie. I'm happy for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Hati is gonna have some time at home, you know, to to think about it and see if we can't. Because one, I mean, like Hooker was fantastic. I mean, like mm-hmm. just some fighters have it. They have the ability to get in there. 
be humorous, can take Oscar, uh, you know, on on the fly and just roll with it, you know. Will there be others? I guarantee, I guarantee there'll be somebody that can fill in. And, and it's not like it's just whatever, but it, it depends. hopefully Pub Talk yeah, will, will Dan continue. Dan Hooker was the imagine. star of the show. Let's be honest with you. It was yeah. all Oscar. <laughs> people were like, Oscar, people were like I'm, I'm Oscar had to hear carry Oscar. him every time. Who, am I, who is this other guy? What's he even doing here? Yeah, What's the point? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, hopefully it'll just be a short hiatus until. Uh, well, I think uh, the way I've decided to put it is end of ep- uh, end of season one. Season one to be continued, and maybe I'll find some other strumpet. To, uh, not strumpet. Um, got distracted there, but I thank you for the bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Now, what, well, we are just completely off the rails this point. I'm going to make a decision here uh, in, in order to keep the sanity of everybody involved. Uh, hey, listen, prelims look good as well. A couple of great matchups there. Uh, Alex She's Perez versus Matt lovely. Schnell is the one that uh, stands out to me on there. But Ryan Hall is on there as well. We mentioned Randy Costa versus Tony Kelly's on there. Jillian the, Robertson's kicking off the uh, night. I She's Team Morgan all day. Ryan Hall, boy, if he comes out with another, what's that, Eminari roll? Mm-hmm. Like, and he just rolls right out. I love watching him. His his whole personality, he's just so quiet. And he's just like, mm, I'm just going through life, but I'm just destroying dudes in MMA. He's so fantastic. I'm so looking forward to that fight. You know what I've decided I like about moving to Wednesdays is that <laughs> nobody's worried about having to wake up at 7 a.m. on Friday. Right. Tell me about it. Things are getting a little crazy, and I, I, I think it's supposed the to be. The only bad thing is, dude, is that I get drunk two days in a row instead. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> you, do <laughs> that do like that? you do that anyways. You do that anyways. Yeah. Like, that's like every week. Phenomenal. All right, listen, we uh, appreciate everybody that put it up with our change of schedule. Again, if you want to support the show, uh, head on to <laughs> patreon.com slash the MMA road show. You get exclusive access to the and a half. <laughs> and, of course, you can just leave us, rate us, review us. <laughs> I don't know if I want you to rate us or review nah, us no, after this, this don't, episode. Don't, don't rate this Maybe one. don't rate this, rate this one. Maybe go back one. and listen to some of the – well, I don't even know if I'd tell you to go back and listen to some of the other 349. I'm not sure, but hey. we appreciate the support. <laughs> and thanks for listening.